Hey everybody, Adam Savage here in my cave. And I've got a tool tip today that, mm, I try and give tool tips for things I feel like I have a distinct point of view for and some useful information for you. And in this regard, I'm about to do a tool tip about chisels. And it's a, it's a question I get all the time. What kind of chisels are your favorite? I have lots of chisels. I probably got 40 or 50 chisels of different kinds in this shop. I have many different kinds. I've got spoon chisels and I've got carving knives and marking knives and I've got Japanese chisels, the hollow ground face and beautiful steel. I've got some uh, cheapy, cheapy, cheapy uh, 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 hardware store chisels that were like five bucks. I got your medium grade hardware store chisels. Um, suffice to say, ooh, got a corner chisel. Um, okay, so chisels are like, Chisels are like this weird area of tools. I think a lot of people, uh, me included, are intimidated by the idea of a chisel. Yeah, I'm intimidated by the idea of a chisel because I look at this thing and I look at this thing and I'm like, I can't really tell the difference. And, and I feel like I should, but honestly, I can't. I mean, I, I recognize that the Japanese chisel here is, uh, functionally different in its me metallurgy, and I understand that metallurgy. Uh, and this is this like, I mean, this is my go-to uh, garbage chisel. I try and keep it sharp, but I don't mind making it dull. This one, I would never get it into a situation where I might make it dull because it's beautiful metal and it deserves to be well-kept. But, so that's, that. that's like, people are like, a really good chisel is like 25 bucks and a cheap chisel is like five bucks. Which one should I get? And my answer is, I don't know. I have no point of view about which one of these chisels is best for one thing or another. I suspect the more expensive chisels will hold their edge longer. But in the hands of an amateur, all chisels get dull pretty quickly. And in the hands of an expert, Many chisels can hold their edge for way longer than you would imagine. All this is true. So what is the information that I have to impart to you about chisels? I am currently in the state of mind that I really don't care which chisel I am going to use for a specific thing. I just want to use the sharpest one. Now, in my drawer of chisels, this Japanese one and its two mates, a large, medium, and a small. These are my go-to, like, I'm working on a nice piece of woodworking, like my end tables that I made my partner for Christmas, and I wanna like make a corner really perfect, I'll pull these out. When I want to peel off some glue of something and I want it to be a nice, precise operation, I'll grab this thing. Maybe there's a staple in the way. I'm not gonna worry about it too much. So if it doesn't matter which chisel, if I don't feel like it matters that much which chisel I use, um, like I said, I mean, I, I kind of allocate these for this, but I, I don't really notice the, the, the performative difference. What I do notice in the performative difference is when I keep my chisels super sharp, they are awesome to use. So I thought I'd show you how I keep my chisels really sharp. And this is like, this is the point of view of, I'm effectively a chisel neophyte. Um, and you know, I've watched sharpening videos on YouTube, but sharpening, man, it's like coffee. The signal to noise ratio of what is the way to do it is almost one. Um, and that makes it really complicated. But I don't, for me personally, it's not that complicated. Um, I've got some, let's see here. Got some even some knife work in here, do we? No, that's tapping flat. Oh, wait a second. I know where that might be. There we go. I have some sharpening stone oil. Um, and I prefer to. So here's how I keep my chisels sharp. I use one of these, and this is a. Let's see, do I have another one? 
No, I don't. I thought I did. Um, okay, so this is effectively a little cart that, oh, here, let's go. Oh, there we go. This is a little traveler that holds blades in a specific orientation, and this brass wheel at the bottom lets you maintain that relationship to the stone. Uh, let's see, what's, uh... oh, this is just my 600 grit stone. That's great. This is the main stone I use for my chisels. Um, this is 600 grit made by um, Ohishi, and I love it. It's a Japanese water stone. Um, Oh, should I not use oil with it? I don't know, but I do. Uh, so this is, this is uh, again, your results may vary. My information may be only tangentially useful to you, but here it is. So when you're sharpening a chisel, what's really, really, really important is that face needs to be super flat and that face needs to be super flat. You don't want to sharpen this with like a file. You're going to end up with a convex blade profile. Uh, you want this edge to be super flat. Um, and I'm just going to sharpen the stone and show you how I do it. Um, oh, you know what? Yeah, I've just used three and one oil on that in the past. I only just got the stone cutting oil. Um, so let's, uh, just get a little bit there. Okay. And then, so the difficulty that a lot of people have with sharpening is that relationship, right? How do you make sure that that is flat? And to be sure, you can get a feel for doing it. My uncle Paul's the first human to teach me carpentry talked about how you can Push it down until you see the oil squeeze out and then you know you're flat and then you can just slowly work at it. But frankly, I have found myself way too impatient for that kind of operation and these operate much better. So here's how this works. I, I get this close and I just, there it is. It's just a single uh, right-hand thread, left-hand thread, you turn this and both of these ends move towards the middle and they grab your blade. Now, once they've grabbed your blade, you wanna make sure your blade is flat against the surface. You wanna make sure that this is where most of my grinding happens, almost all of my grinding happens right here. So I want that part to be perfectly, perfectly parallel to the stone. And if I remember correctly, I gotta go all the way towards the, oh, okay, actually. Yeah. I'm gonna give that one more tighten because this relationship is super important. Oh, not quite. You can see a little air there. You really can see, you can really dial this into an impressive level of parallel, parallelity, parallelism. Let me get this going. Uh -huh. Yep. Okay. That feels really good. Let's take a look at this blade because I've used it a bunch recently. So you can see I've got a little, a little nick right there. That's from my misuse. In fact, when I run my finger over it, I can feel a little burr sticking up from there. Um, <clears throat> yeah. So I'm going to try and get rid of that. And I'm hoping the after picture for this chisel looks much better than this one. Wow. Look at my Messed up finger. All right. I'm gonna put a little oil there. Probably too much. And that's tight. Let me better. All right. 
I am not cutting on one stroke or the other. I'm cutting on both. Um, let me, I'm gonna put some Sharpie on here so I can witness what I'm cutting away. That's nice. I'm very, very, very close to parallel. Got to pull off a little bit off that, uh, the top part of this. I'm maybe, who knows, half a degree, a quarter degree off. And I'm just applying lots of pressure right here. And by the way, this is a new one of these carriers that I've just gotten. Um, the old one I had, I literally paid like five, six bucks for it at Ace Hardware and it worked for years for me. I just saw this one, which was considered a better one, and I was like, ah, let me upgrade that one. Almost. So um, if you take a look, what you can see is, see that little dark spot out at the edge? That's Sharpie I still haven't peeled off. So it's, it was off by probably less than half of a thousand. And, Let's take a look at this now. So first up, is that an artifact of the metallurgy of the chisel that I'm seeing there? Is that like a Hamon line of the harder base that holds the edge welded to the softer part of this chisel? I mean, that sort of line is very visible on this chisel, right? You can see the distinct difference in metallurgy between the tip and the body here. That may be what I'm witnessing here, but I'm not sure. Um, but this edge is really nice. I mean, it's crazy sharp right now. Uh, the base of this is in good shape. Yeah. Um, and now I'm actually gonna take this one step further. That's a 600 grit stone. And that is really pretty great. I've got a um, 1,000, 3,000 stone, so I'm now gonna take it up to a 1,000. So now that's a pretty respectable face. I know that there's way farther I can go because I watched that YouTube channel of the guy who makes knives out of everything from tin foil to paper towels to dog poop or whatever. Um, but that is about where I take all my chisels. Start with the 600, move to the 1000, then to the 3000, and that gets me the edge that I'm looking for. Let's cut something. Oh. 
bites well, it's very consistent. And that's how I manage my chisels. <sighs> Again, I use chisels all the time for dumb stuff, but for the like super fine woodworking stuff they're really meant for, I do that very infrequently. Um, so I keep my better chisels in reserve. I keep them as sharp as they were the day I bought them and I may have touched them up here and there. But this garbage chisel right here, I'm able to keep sharp enough to supply like 90% of what I do with chisels here in the shop. And if I ended up with some recalcitrant pair of things that could not be separated, I would not be above hammering this $5 chisel into the middle to separate them, knowing that I might harm the tip. And I would never do that with a nice Japanese chisel. Yeah, this is a weird tool tip, right? Because I, I, I don't have a lot of information to impart to you except how I manage the sharpness uh, and utility of my chisels. Thank you guys for joining me for this tool tip. I am so sure there's gonna be all sorts of advice in the comments about sharpening and about stones and about your favorite products. Thank you so much for all that advice. I really appreciate it. Uh, and <clears throat> if I come across something that's life-changing, I will share it with you. Thank you guys for joining me. I will see you next time. By the way, I use this handy device also for sharpening the blades for my planes. Same exact procedure. Log it in here, make it flat, start with the 600, go to the one, then the three. Um, and I am, I can report to you that my planes are all of them in terrific working order. And again, you know what my favorite one is? This little Craftsman, I think this is a Craftsman, uh, finger plane. It used to be the one you could buy at Ace Hardware. Maybe it still is. Um, this is, uh, I used to work with uh, the legendary Ira Keeler, an amazing wood carver and model maker who worked at ILM's model shop. Ira carved the uh, wooden bucks for the, for stormtrooper masks so that they could be vacuum formed. Yeah, he carved a stormtrooper out of basswood uh, to be vacuum formed. Ira is amazing and he did 95% of everything with one of these chisels. Uh, he modified it in a couple ways. He flattened the bottom because the bottom does not come uh, nice enough uh, and he keeps the blades really sharp. And the form factor of this, not amazing, but this is a great little chisel for emergency pickup work. Um, I have lots and lots of little differences in chisels, but again, sorry, differences in Planes, just like the chisels, I have the same lack of point of view as to what makes the right plane, what makes the worst plane. I don't know, uh, I don't have a point of view about that, but I do keep them all sharp using this same little doohickey. Um, oh, this one is made by MyTech. Uh, but again, I'm, I've used the really cheapo ones and they've worked for me just fine. Oh no, that one lives in the chisel. Oh, do you want to see the chisel drawer just before I go? There's all my good chisels. There's my main baby.